Our topic this morning is why a heavenly court process is necessary. This is the common question ng mga believers na first time na marinig itong tungkol sa courts of heaven. And their argument is, we were saved by grace. Why do we need to go to the court? Tama. We were saved by grace through faith. Maliwanag po yun. But when we talk about the courts of heaven, we are not talking about salvation. Kasi nung tayo po ay naborn again, tinanggap natin siya, nagsisi tayo ng ating mga kasalanan, we were saved. And why do we need the courts? It is because ang tao ay, after he got born again, patuloy pa rin siyang nagkakasala. And every time na siya ay magkasala, the Bible says he is being accused by the devil in the courts of heaven. And remember, sin has consequences. Ang kasalanan ay merong consequences. Because the Bible says, di ba sabi niya, for the wages of sin is death. And every time you partake sin, We are taking something that belongs to the devil. And if we partake something that belongs to the devil, we pay him. And what, ang kasalanan po kasi hindi libre. May bayad dyan. At ang binabayad, binabayaran natin sa, ang ibinabayad natin sa kaaway is legal right. We are giving him legal right to mess our life. We're giving him authority over our properties because our life is considered as what? Properties. Okay? So, you need the court. Because in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, sabi niya, if you confess your sin, he is just and faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So, the very basis of God for our, for, to receive, to receive, the forgiveness of God is you need to confess. Confession is different from repentance. Confession is you agree with God that that is what you are confessing is a sin and it hurts God. Nakuha niyo po? And sa chapter 2, verse 1, ang sabi niya, I say this thing to you that you will not sin. And then if you sin, sabi ng Panginoon, sabi ni John, you have an advocate in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is an advocate? The advocate is what? He's a defense lawyer. Because the enemy, our enemy, is not a sundalo, tandaan natin. He is a lawyer. Dito sa lupa, ang katapat niya, piskal, the accuser. Kaya ang sabi ng Bible, he accuses us before God before the judge, day and night. Because only accusation can only happen in a court. So, every sin has a consequence. And ayaw ni Lord na maranasan natin yung consequence ng kasalanan. That's why God provided a heavenly court para ano? Matalo natin ang kaaway because sabi ng Revelation chapter 12, di ba? Sabi niya, you overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Oh, testimony is only used in a court of law. Okay? So, that's the very first reason why a heavenly court process is necessary. We are not talking salvation here because we are already saved by grace through faith. And the reason why God provided a court is for us ma matanggal yung mga charges na 
ibabato sa atin ng ating kaaway every time we commit sin. Ano ba niyo pa? Now, let this teaching is credits to Miss Elizabeth Nixon. He has a uh, book that talks about his, she's a lawyer and she wrote a book that talks about the court of accusation. Okay? Now, the concept of the courts of heaven. There are prayers that we have prayed that have gone unanswered. Di ba? Sa tagal na ng panahon, marami tayong mga panalangin sa Bisaya, pag-ampo na ginawa, na hanggang ngayon, no answer. It may not be that what we are asking for is wrong. Hindi dahil mali yung hinihingi natin. It is because what we are asking, the enemy has a legal right. Second, the enemy has a legal right over our personal lives. It is either our personal sin or the sin of our forefathers. But there is a different venue or a different way in which to pray. Diba? Pinag-aralan natin last time yung tungkol sa word na prayer. In Greek, it means prosyokomai, and literally, pray, to pray means to enter the presence of God. Okay? So, when you come to understand where and how you're actually praying, will give you advantage in prayer. Because every time you pray, you close your eyes, and you pray, you are not praying in, in the earth. You are in heaven. Because the Bible is very clear when he said that we are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. So the role of revelation is to get deeper grasp on a spiritual principle. That's why God is giving us revelation. And it sets you free at higher levels and you gain much needed strength, purpose, and advantage. Kaya po ang Diyos, nagpupur out siya ng revelation. So you cannot just close your understanding about God na akala mo ito lang ang tungkol sa Diyos, no? Because in my personal experience, the more you know God, the more you don't know Him. So, going into the courts of heaven is a tool, but the courts of heaven is a real place in heaven. Tandaan niyo po, may korte sa langit. Tandaan niyo po, may korte sa langit. So the role of the courts of heaven is actually to unite us to the Father and with His purposes for our life. The concept of the courts of heaven is all about intimacy. Because you cannot fight the enemy toe-to-toe. Even Archangel Michael in Jude, in the book of Jude, diba, when he, he made a confrontation with the devil about the body of Moses. Sabi na ni Jude is he did not raise a railing accusation against the devil. He only said, the Lord rebuked thee. In Zechariah chapter 3, Joshua the high priest is in the courts of heaven and the enemy is accusing him of wearing a dirt, wearing a dirty linen. It's about sin. And the angel of the Lord said, The Lord rebuked thee. In those verses, maintindihan natin that we are not allowed to, to make a toe-to-toe confrontation with the devil. It is only the judge has the power to rebuke. The thing that we need to do is what? To make petitions and submit the petition before the judge. Okay? So, the courts of heaven is a real place in heaven. Most of us already came there in the courts of heaven. Remember in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, uh, the author is explaining about the difference of the Mount Sinai, where Moses went to Mount Sinai 
And as in the New Testament is Mount Zion. At ang description ng, ng author, and sabi niya, you have come to Mount Zion. Anong ibig sabihin? Galing ka na doon. Don't you know that every time we repent of our sin, we confess our sin before God? Actually, you are in the courts of heaven. That is, other called it, the courts of accusation. Hmm. You are being accused of the devil of the sin that you have committed. So, the courts of heaven, we are not seeking God's judgment against any person, but against the spiritual realm that operates around, about, and through others. So, bawal dalhin ang kapwa-tao sa korte sa langit. Eh, paano yan, pastor, kung yung tao ay may utang? Sabi ng Bible, patawarin mo. Because we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. The first thing that we need to do is what? That the, the one that we are going to bring to the courts of heaven are the spirit behind the injustices that we are experiencing. Not the person. Nakuha niyo po. Kasi, when you go to the court, and you bring the person. Kasi alam mo, nasaktan ka nung tao na yon, May ginawa siyang mali. You can do it if you don't want to listen to me. Go ahead. Bring it before the court, that person. And this is what the judge will say to you. Have you followed the law? What the law says? Forgive. Love your neighbor. As you love yourself or love your enemies that is the first thing because when accuses when you accuse okay so we are not seeking God's judgment against any person if you try to bring a fellow human being in the courts of heaven I guarantee you ang tatanong sa'yo ng Lord have you reconciled with the person because most of the time, the enemy, the God did not, will not answer our prayer because if we have what? Unforgiveness. Okay? So, it is very important na maunawaan natin that the courts of heaven is only against the spiritual realm. The spirit behind the injustices na iyong naranasan. Okay? So, when we pray, specifically, when we intercede, we are engaging in the legal presentation of a case before God. Tandaan niyo po, di ba ang word na parakletos is, it means to intercede. Jesus Christ is uh, our uh, mediator, at the same time, he is our advocate. So, when you intercede for someone, basically, what you are doing is you are what? Engaging in the legal presentation of a case before God. Okay? So, if you are an intercessor, you are actually a spiritual lawyer. You are presenting a case before the Lord. It might be your personal case or other people's case. Now, why a heavenly court process is necessary? It is important to know that there are parallels between the procedures and protocols of the earth courts and heavenly courts. There are similarities, okay? And most of what we have in the natural is established in order to mirror something in the spirit, to give us a context for understanding. I'll give you an example. The word, like for example, the principle of marriage in the natural. And in the spiritual realm, he called it the marriage of the bride and the bridegroom. The bride of Christ are the believers and the groom is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Look at Ephesians chapter 5. A man leaves his father and mother and joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. See, Paul uses uh, the principle of marriage in the natural to explain to us the relationship or to illustrate to us the way Christ and the church are one. Okay? So, earthly court cases reflect processes and procedures and principle that the kingdom of heaven is similarly established upon. Maaring hindi parehas, eksakto, but there are similarities. Okay? Now, there are four reasons well, that we are going to discuss why a heavenly court courts is necessary. Number one, the courts are where we take ownership of the promises. Number two, the courts order that that is illegal. It is illegal to take matters into our own hands. The courts provide a venue to punish the enemy and also to allow God to order your life and to release you into your divine destiny. Okay? Now, let's start with number one. Why a heavenly court process is necessary? The first reason is a court process is necessary because it is how we take ownership of the promises of God. Remember, the promises in God's word are opportunities that you need to avail yourself of. You need to do something in order to get the benefit and advantage to them. Nakuha niyo po? They are promises or gifts, just like gifts under the Christmas tree. Even though it is, re, uh, it, it belongs to you, nakasulat yung pangalan mo dun sa regalo, but until you take it and open it, you will never experience that gift. Okay? While it is true that Jesus died for everyone, but not everyone is saved, unless they avail themselves of the gift, they must take it as their own. Remember what the Bible says, but believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Oh, diba sabi niya? And but as many as receive him, to them he gave the rights to become children of God. Jesus already died on the cross, kaya ako naniniwala, walang sino mang tao na mapupunta sa impyerno dahil sa kasalanan. Pero may mapupunta sa impyerno, alam niyo bakit? Not because of his sin that he has committed, because it is already dealt with in the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. The only reason he's going to, to heaven is because he did not believe. The very reason, I mean, he will go to hell it's not, be, not because of sin, of his sin or her sin. It's because he did not believe on what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Because Jesus said he's not willing that anyone should perish, but all will come to repentance. Nakuha niyo po? He's not willing. Same true with the courts of heaven. The courts of heaven, the promises of God, I mean, is already been given to us. That's why the Bible says he already declared that we are joint heirs with Christ. When we got born again, the Lord gave us inheritance or will. You know, the will of God. It's not a job description. The will of God is what? An inheritance that he gave to us. God, when He died on the cross of Calvary, He left us an inheritance. And the only way you can take that inheritance is when you appear before the court of heaven. Because there are conditions that we must be met in order for us to benefit from the promise. And this condition must, must be met before we can actually be saved. Diba? Romans 10. 
believe uh, if you will confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, you will be saved. So that was the condition. So, hindi po automatic. Hindi po automatic. Like for example, yung salitan, when two or three gathers in his name, he is in their means. Hindi po yun automatic. Unless we welcome him to come into our means, hindi man siya darating. Because God works always in partnership with human being. With his sons and daughters, nakikipag-partner siya. So, yung promises sa Bible, hindi yan automatic. May mga condition yan. And this condition must be met before we can actually be saved. Kung salvation ang pinag-uusapan, di ba? That's one of the promises of God. Romans 10.9 If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that's the requirement. And believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, then you will be saved. So, if this true of the most important promise and gift from the Lord, how much more it is true for all the other promises? Kung totoo yan, yung pinaka-importanting promise, salvation of man. Eh, how much more dun sa ibang mga promises? So, you have to show up and confess with your mouth. You have to speak out your agreement and believe in your heart that that is true. Oh. Same to be the courts of heaven. Di ba sabi niya ang kondisyon niya? In Luke chapter 18, sabi niya, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on earth? Will He find people who believe that there is a court in heaven? Will He, will he find... When he came back, will he find people who believe that God is a judge? And everything na kailangan natin na andun sa kanya. Oh. Hebrews 11.6 In order to draw near to God, you must believe, di ba? That God exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. So, I mean, it is impossible to please God without the faith. And if we draw near to God, we must believe that He is a rewarder to them that diligently seek Him. That's why the first requirement for the courts of heaven is you have to believe. So, activating a promise in the Spirit is equivalent in the natural law to taking title and possession to the gift. Alam mo, may lupa. Nakapangalan sa magulang mo ay namatay sila. Yon ay kinakailangan mailipat yan sa mga ears. Eh kung kayo yung magkakapatid, halimbawa lima kayong magkakapatid, magkakaroon yan na tinatawag na extrajudicial partition. And that land has a title and deed. At kung yun ay nakapangalan pa doon sa mga magulang mo, hindi mo maidispose, hindi mo maibenta yan until ma-transfer yan sa mga ears. Nakamahan niyo po? Oo. Eh yung iba, dahil hindi alam, tumagal ng tumagal yung property na hindi na ilipat sa mga anak. Kaya, advice ko po sa inyo, kung kayo po ay may property, habang buhay pa ho kayo, i-transfer nyo na sa mga anak nyo. Bakit? Kasi malaki yung tax ang babayaran, may inheritance tax yan. Hmm. Pag namatayan nyo yung property na, na hindi na ilipat sa pangalan nyo. Di ba? Malaki yung tax na babayaran nyo. Kaya yung iba, uh, yung amount ng lupa, dahil matagal na, na hindi na i-transfer, so yung tax na babayaran nila, mas malaki pa sa actual amount ng property. Oh. Kaya, ang ginagawa na lang nila, as is na lang. Oh. But the but the bad thing on that, hindi mo ma-dispose yung property sa tamang presyo. Di ba? Lalo kung napakaganda ng property mo, nasa sentro, commercial area, hindi mo maibenta. You, you get the point? So, activating a promise in the spirit 
is equivalent to the natural of taking title and possession to the gift. So if I left you an inheritance in my will, you would have to go to the court to have that gift confirmed and to have the title transfer and made legal and official. Halimbawa, if I, if my father left me a 1 million pesos in, in a bank, namatay siya, pumunta ako sa banko, and kiniklaim ko yung uh, 1 million, we withdraw ko. Question, will the bank manager allow me to withdraw the money? No. Ang sasabihin niya sa iyo, pumunta muna sa korte. Magpa-appoint ka muna sa korte na ikaw nga ang tinatawag na personal representative ng tatay mo. So what I will do, I'll go to the court and file a petition that I am his personal representative. So when I receive that, I'll go to the, to the bank. Alam niyo ba ang gagawin ng manager? Pooperan opera ka ng kape. Puupuin ka. Sir, anong, kap, anong coffee gusto niyo? Mm -hmm. Black or with, with milk? Bakit? You are not the new owner of that property, of that money. Kasi pag hindi ka niyang pinakape at hindi ka in-entertain ng maayos, you can withdraw the money at pwede mong ilipat sa ibang banko. Nakuha niyo yung ibig sabihin? So, importante na ito ay ano, ma-transfer sa'yo. Same true, whatever will na ibinigay sa atin ni Lord, kinakalang ma-transfer sa'yo legally. And how? You go to the court. Remember, the devil is a squatter here on earth. And even our personal property has a claim. Even our uh, territorial or geographical properties, may claim din siya. Kaya maraming mga tao na mga may property, hindi nila ma-dispose ang property nila. Why? There is a spirit in that property. First John 5, 14 to 15. This is the confidence that we have in God that if we ask anything according to His will. Tandaan niyo po ha? Kalooban, His will. You have to think of other meaning of the word will. Ito yung ano, last will and testament ni Lord. Hindi lang ito yung gusto niya. When you read the word will, it talks about inheritance. So, sabi niya, if you ask anything according to his inheritance na ibinigay sa atin, he will hear us. And if we know that He hear us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we have desire. See? You need to make a petition. Oh, John 16, 23 to 24. In that day, when we are with Him face to face, you will ask of me nothing because you will be with the Father and your joy will be full. But for now, ask of me whatever you will so that your Father who is in heaven may give it to you so that your joy may be full. The very reason God is going to give it to you is because He wants you to what? To have your joy. Ang Diyos hindi kill joy. Ang Diyos gusto niya na maging masaya ka. Mm. He wants your joy may be full. So praying according to God's will, what does it mean? Kasi meron po kami pinag-coin na terminology ni Attorney Lyndon. Ang tawag namin doon is judicial inquiry. So when you are asking for a specific will of God, you go to the court, at ang tawag namin doon, judicial inquiry. Religious term, it means seeking the will of God or hearing from the Lord. So, we just coined this word, judicial inquiry, para magmukhang uh, forte yung, yung gagawin. Parang ganun. 
So we see an example of praying according to God's will with King David at Siklag. Okay? In 1 Samuel 30 verse 8, And David inquired of the Lord. So judicial inquiry is what? Inquiring of the Lord. Okay? Saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Remember in Siklag, nakuha ng kaaway yung mga asawa ng mga kasama ni David, even yung mga bata. Na-overrun yung Siklag. And the people with him, yung kanyang mga sundala, were discouraged. At sa sobrang discouragement nila, gusto nilang patayin si David. Okay? And what, the, what David did, he inquired of the Lord. Pero normally, kapag yung anak at asawa mo ay natangay ng kalaban mo, you don't need to ask someone or God. You have to do it. Di ba? Parang normal yun na gawin mo dapat. Kasi kailang makuha mo yung anak mo eh, at asawa mo. But here, David inquired of the Lord. He asked the Lord, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered him, Pursue, for you'll surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. And that's what happened. So, only in inquiring of the Lord do we come to know His intention. Tandaan natin. You need to inquire. Sometimes, when you go to the court, it is not all the time making a petition. Sometimes you do what we call judicial inquiry. Because you don't know what is the perfect will of heaven for that specific thing. Making a decision based on the circumstances alone invokes our soul response. Uh, kasi kung sa circumstances lang tayo magbabase ng ating mga decision, soulish lang yon, Yung kaluluwa mo lang. So, inquiring of the Lord, the Lord invokes His response. That's why judicial inquiry is important. You ask the just judge of the universe, Lord, if I do this, is it your will? Oh. You can present your present circumstances. Oh. Lord, ito po yung sitwasyon ko ngayon. What is your perfect will for this? In the courts of heaven, you do not decree your own opinion of circumstances. You do not decree your own wants or wishes. You go to the courts to receive, to activate, and to establish God's purpose. Pagkatandaan natin. You don't decree your own wants. Kaya di ba may mga tao nagpipray, I decree in Jesus' name. You don't decree. You have no right to decree because creating a decree is a work of what? Legislative. It is the work of the lawgiver. And remember, the lawgiver is our God, the Father. So you don't decree. You declare the decree of God. Whatever you receive in the courts of heaven, you declare here on earth. So you go to the courts to receive. No, no, one, you po. You don't decree your own wants or wishes. Because the plan of God is always partnership with us. That's why He gave us will. He wants us to partner with Him. He wants to release to you the fullness of His promises. But we have to be agreeing with and praying according to His will. Will. His last will and testament. May iniwan sa atin si Lord na will. Kaya every one of us, every each one of us, meron tayong specific will. That's why meron tinatawag na the book of heaven, the book of light. That's why when you go to the court, there is a book of life. Your book will be open. 
And I tell you, it, may, may tanong, sino ang may karapatang magbukas ng libro natin? Can anybody can see the book? No. It is God's will. It is God's prerogative. When He opens the book for you, nakita mo, hindi man yan pababasa sa'yo sa lahat, especially the future, hindi ipakita sa'yo lahat. Bakit? Kasi pag nakita mo lahat, baka umatras ka na. Kaya every time you go to the court, your book is open. And the decision of God sa mga petition mo is based on what is written in that book. E yung iba, pinipilit nila makita yung libro. Yung lahat ng laman. Hindi ho ipakita sa inyo ng Diyos. Prerogative ng Diyos yan. Na ipakita sa iyo kung ano nakasulat. But we just believe by faith that that book ang basis of the decision of God on my petition is based on what is written in that book. Even before the foundations of the earth, nakasulat na dyan ang plano sa iyo ng Panginoon. What we only need to do is to ask the court to open for us a certain part of the book na kailangan nating maintindihan. Nakuha niyo po. So, He wants to release you to the fullness of His promises. But we have to be agreeing with. We need to agree. Hmm. And praying according to His last will and testament na ibinigay sa iyo. This is also true in the natural as well. Lawyers cannot litigate a client's wishes. They can only present a case according to what the law provides. Okay, halimbawa, na-aksidente o nasagasaan yung anak mo na matay. May formula yan, may computation yan kung magkano ang ibabayad nung naka-aksidente sa kanya. Hindi po pwede na yung kliyente mag-suggest, oh, dapat bayaran niya na isang bilyon ako dahil napatay niya yung anak ko. No. It was always according to what the law provides. O halimbawa, na pinatay yung anak mo, nagdemanda ka, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin sa lawyer, pwede ba natin gawin na ano, death sentence ang ano natin sa kanya? Hindi pwede, kasi wala namang death sentence ngayon sa atin. Ano lang, uh, reclusion perpetua at uh, life sentence. Oh. Either of the two. Kasi I think yung the reclusion perpetua is reclusion perpetua is only 40 years. Yung isa ata yung life sentence is hanggang mamatay ka. So, ang point doon is it is the court that will decide. Nakuha niyo po. So, all the promises for you has to be activated. And how it has to be activated over your life, you present yourself before the just judge of heaven. So, one reason a court procedure is necessary because it is how we take title to a gift. Alam niyo ba yung lupa natin? Ang tawag dyan ay, pag may lupa ka, meron kang title and deeds. The deeds is the actual document. The title is your right. Oh. So, may promise si Lord sa atin. Kinakailang mapasayo yan. No. For example, I gave you a house in my will. And you would have to go to the court for the title to be transferred properly to you. Kasi, yung bahay na yun, nakapangalan pa sa akin. Eh, namatay na ako. So, it has to be transferred to you. So, what do you need to do? Eh, you have to present the ano, last will and testament na pinermahan ko, na ibinibigay ko sa iyong bahay. And then, you're going to prove yourself that you are the person na nakasulat doon sa will. And then, the judge will appoint you as what? The ear of this property. And the judge is going to transfer that property to you. Now, the title is now transferred to you. So, you are now the new owner. 
na kanya po. So, tandaan natin, the heavenly court process is necessary is because the court, the heavenly court is where we take the promises of God. Because the promises of God is not automatic. You have to activate it. And how? You go to the court. You activate it. Okay? Number two. Ito ang mahalaga. Isa sa mahalaga. It is illegal to take matters into our own hand. In the court, in the natural court, it is illegal to take matters into our own hands. Halimbawa, pinatay yung anak mo, hindi mo pwedeng ikaw ang pumatay doon sa pumatay. Because it is illegal. Bakit? Pag pinatay mo yun, makukulong ka din. Oh. You have to go to the court. You have to file a criminal case against that person. In the earthly realm, earthly realm ang tawag dyan, self-help. And self-help is illegal. For example, if someone shoot a family member, and no matter how much you want to, you are not allowed to go and shoot them back. Not even just to wound them. Hindi pwede. Kasi pag ginawa mo yan, parehas kayong makukulong. If you do, what happens to both of you? You both go to the court. And probably both go to jail. Part of the reason for this is for your protection. Because the situation will likely escalate and violence open follows. Kaya pinoprotektahan tayo ng Diyos. You cannot take matters into your own hand. The devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So, you cannot fight the devil toe-to-toe. Because your security is at risk. Nakuha niyo po, mapapahama ka. Kaya ang gusto ni Lord, matutunan natin ang mag-petition sa court and let the judge uh, command his heavenly host to destroy the enemy. Eh, ang natutunan natin, tayo ang sumisigaw at tayo ang nakipag-away at gustong gusto natin, tayo ang makipag-away sa mga demonyo. You cannot fight the devil. Because in Psalm chapter 8, verse 4, sabi niya, what is a man that you are mindful of him? Sabi ni Lord, you have created him a little lower than the Elohim. So you cannot fight the devil because you are not wrestling against what? Flesh and blood. Oh, how do you fight him? We are flesh and, you know, he's a spirit. Oh. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So, he's going to kill us. That's why, sabi ni Lord, it is for your own safety. Do not take the matters into your own hands. Kaya anong sabi ng angel? Archangel Mike Gabriel, uh, Michael, when he has a dispute with the devil about the body of Moses, the Bible says he did not raise a railing accusation, but he only said, the Lord rebukes thee. So maliwanag sa talata na yan, the only one who has the power to rebuke the devil is the judge. Diba? Tagal natin ginagawa. Pabalik-balik lang yung mga demonyo. Mm. At madalas, meron pang retaliation. Tayo pa ang nagagantihan. Because we're not doing the spiritual warfare the right way. You cannot take matters into your own hands in a face-to-face -face confrontation with the enemy because your safety is at risk, mga kapatid. Kaya nung naintindihan ko na ito, hindi na ako nagre-rebuke sa kaaway. Sumbog na lang ako sa tatay ko. Judge yung tatay ko eh. Oh. And the judge can send the heavenly host to arrest this spirit, this tip that comes only to steal and kill and destroy. 
Kaya dapat maturo ang po natin yung ating mga members sa hanggang ngayon nagre-rebuke pa rin sa demonyo. Wala tayong magagawa. Yun ang ating natutunan nung unang panahon eh. Oh. And now God is revealing the truth, the, the right understanding on how to engage with the enemy. Ephesians 6.12 For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. How can you fight this unseen, the authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world? Sige nga. And against evil spirit in the heavenly places. Oh, how do you fight that? So the Lord gave us a formula or a way to do that. You just go to his court and make a petition. Parang dito sa lupa, paano magpalayas ng squatter? Ang hirap, lalo dito sa Mindanao, pag may squatter sa lupa mo, ito ang kanilang kaisipan. Amin ang lupa, iyo ang titulo. O, sige nga, paano mo yung mapalayas? Dalhin mo sa korte sa lupa, abutan ka ng taon, patay ka na lang, di mo pa nakuha at napakinabangan yung titulo mo, yung sarili mong lupa. Now, I'm giving, I'm giving you a way, a wisdom. You can go to the courts. So kung kayo may lupa, may property na maraming squatter at hindi nyo maibenta ang lupa nyo, I can help you. You can call me. We can go to the courts of heaven and make what? File a petition. Ang tawag nila doon is petition to quiet title. Kasi someone is merong adverse possession. There are spirits who are trying to ano, may naka-squat doon sa property. So hanggat di nyo na ipapalayas yung squatter sa property nyo, yung spirito, hindi nyo maibenta yung property na yan. Maniwala kayo sa akin. So, what is praying in Jesus' name means? Our authority over the enemy is in Jesus' name. Akala natin yung Jesus name para, in Jesus name, parang ano siya, parang magic word. No. When we go to heaven's court, the judge confirm our authorities and issues order and decrees against the enemy, requiring the enemy to comply with the judge instructions. Tandaan nyo po yung authority sa atin ng Diyos, hindi yun automatic. Akala kasi natin automatic, na pag naborn again ka, automatic na yon. No. You have to confirm it with the judge. Mm. Eh kasi kung automatic yan, bakit pa rin tayo nagkakasakit? Bakit the enemy can still take advantage of us? Nakuha niyo po? Oh. Eh bakit marami pa rin mga tao ang ayaw maniwala sa Diyos kung si Kristo yung namatay sa krus sa Kalbaryo? Oh. Kung niligtas na ng Diyos ang lahat ng tao, bakit ang ganyan, maraming tao pa rin ang gusto pumunta sa impyerno? Because it is not automatic. Nakuha niyo po? So, when we go to the courts of heaven, the judge confirms our authority. Hmm. Oh, anak kita. Oh, this is my authority. Remember what Jesus did? Binigay niya yung authority doon sa mga disciple niya na magpalayas ang demonyo. Di ba? Pagbalik ng 70 disciple, everybody is excited. Nasabi niya ang Panginoon, yung mga tao, yung mga demonyo ay sumusunod sa pangalan mo. Anong sagot ni Jesus? Huwag niyong ikatuwa na yung mga demonyo sumusunod sa inyo. Ikatuwa niyo na yung pangalan ay nasulat sa langit. See? We need to understand the principle. We are not happy and we are not rejoicing because we defeated the devil. Hindi daw yun ang basihan ng ating kaligayahan. Ang ating kaligayahan, ang base ng ating kaligayahan ay ang pangalan natin na nasulat na sa libro ng sa langit. Kasi kuminsan may mga tao na parang ang tawag ko doon ay war prick. Tuwan-tuwa kapag siya inakikipag-away sa demonyo. War prick yun. We don't rejoice on that. That the enemy, because that's not part of the plan of God. 
because spiritual warfare is only the result of the disobedience of men. But from the very beginning, hindi yan plano ng Diyos sa tao. That's not part of the plan A of God. Okay? So he issues orders and decrees against the enemy. And when he issues decrees, we just declare. And the angel will implement the order and the decrees of, of the judge. It has less to do with us, much more to do with the judge authority over the enemy, which authority he confirms to us. That's why you don't need to rebuke. Because when you go to the court and you receive that order and authority, you have that authority. At alam lang ni Satan na may authority ka. And I tell you, malayo ka palang, aalis na yan. Court appearance also provides the opportunity for an authority higher than yourself to confirm to you what is yours. That's why the devil will not listen to us. He will only listen to the voice higher than us or higher than him. That is the voice of the judge. Oh. So when you receive an order from the court, automatic, you go to the court of angels and ask the angels to enforce the decision of the judge. And I tell you, the angel will be disposed. And the rest of the world recognizes your authority. When you go to the court on an inheritance matter to transfer title to the ear, the court confirms what the will says. There is a court of inheritance. Wala doon ang kaaway. They are not allowed to enter to that court. Tayo lang ang pwedeng may access sa court of inheritance. And the purpose of the court of inheritance is what? To take what is legally yours. It a transfer yung title to you as the ear. Okay? And the court will confirm what the will says. It is written in your book what the will says. So, but more importantly, the court confirms it so that the rest of the world will deal with you in your new capacity as new as owner. Kaya pag ang isang property na i-transfer sa'yo, everyone, yung mga utilities, yung bankos, ano man yun, na may kaugnayan dyan sa lupa mo, ikaw na ang kakausapin. Hindi na yung former owner. Kasi na-transfer na. Because when you inherit title, you not only have the new property as your own, you also have a new position and a new authority go with it. I'll give you an example. Psalm 37 verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. The word give in Hebrew is Natan. Okay? It means it confirms that a new title and new authority are part of the gift given. Not only is the gift received, but there is a new authority that is part of the gift. When the Lord gave you that gift, may kasama itong authority. No, no, ano po? The great example of what is word natan means is sin when a woman becomes a mother. Okay? She received the gift and the title as a mother. The title and authority forever changes who the woman is. And more importantly, that title and authority can never be taken from her. She received the gift, a child, and kasama noon yung title. Ano yung title? Mother. Oh. So in a court of law, when the judge issue an order confirming your ownership of the property, 
the title companies, the insurance agent, the utilities company, everyone involved with that property, they are now required by judge order to acknowledge you as the new owner and to recognize and respect your new authority. When God gave you the property, the title, kasama doon yung ano, authority. He gave us a title, we are what? Sons of God. At kasama doon yung ano, authority. So when we go before God as a judge, He confirms our authority in Christ. Then issues spiritual decrees and orders that require His angel to serve us in this new capacity. And those same orders and decrees require the forces of darkness to comply with the authority we are granted by the courts of heaven. That's why the courts, the devil, and his forces will just bow down will respect that authority of yours that you have got that you got from the courts of heaven so hangga di ka pumupunta doon yung authority ni Cristo ibinigay sa atin hindi automatic yon you have to go to the court if the forces of darkness do not comply then they are in contempt of court and will have to answer to the judge That's why you can file a case. Contempt of court against the devil. Ayaw sumunod dun sa order ng korte. Oh. Example, you have a property. Ayaw umalis nung mga espiritu dun sa property mo. You can ask the, the court to contempt the devil. Those evil forces that are in your property. Hmm. Ephesians 6.12 evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world and the mighty powers in dark world and evil spirit in the heavenly places, they need to comply. And they will always comply. Why? That is the order of the judge. God as the heavenly judge confirm your authority. Now, no, 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 po. Sabi ni Jesus, all authority is given to me under heaven and earth. And then sabi niya, go and make disciples. You need to go to the court to confirm that authority. The Lord has commissioned His angels to serve you also. That's the good thing. When God gave you that authority, that title, and with authority, kasama ang angel. Because every time you declare the order and the decrees of God, Here on earth, it seems God is the one speaking. That's why the angels will follow you. They will obey your orders because that order comes from the court of heaven. Hebrews 1.14, all angels are on a divine mission sent to serve those who inherit salvation. Oh. So tayo yung ano, uh, pinagkatiwala nung binigyan ni Lord ng... Salvation. And these angels have a divine mission to help us accomplish our purpose on earth. So it is an amazing thing to have power and authority over the realm of darkness. But it is not a thing to be taken lightly. Nor it is really the proper focus. Remember in Luke 20, 10, 20, Don't rejoice because evil spirit obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. Nanoan niyo po. We are not rejoicing because the devil follow our authority. No. That is not the real focus. Why the Lord gave us authority? We don't rejoice because this evil spirit will obey us. No. We rejoice because your name are registered in heaven. When your name is registered in heaven, it means the Lord has acknowledges your authority over the realm of darkness. Number three, check into the last. Number one, you need the court. Sandali lang po.
a court procedure is necessary for what? For taking our promises. Because promises are not automatic. There are promises in the Bible, but you have to believe. Oh. Kailan ma-transfer sa iyo yan? And the only way to transfer that is you go to the court. You, you go to the judge. Second, it is illegal to take matters into your hand. Why? Because your security is at risk. Ayon ni Lord na ano, uh, makipag-away ka kay Satanas. Nakuha niyo po? So ulitin ko po, the number one reason is the courts are where we take ownership of the promises. Second, the courts order it's illegal to take matters into our own hands. Okay? Number three, the court procedure provides a venue to punish the perpetrator. It may seem like a hassle having to go to court, di ba? Halimbawa, na-snatch yung cellphone mo, pero nabawi din, nahuli yung snatcher. Kwa't tanong, will you file a case against the snatcher? Most of us will say no more kasi abala lang yun. But the problem is, hindi man pwedeng ikulong ng pulis yung snatcher ng habang buhay. Kasi walang order ang judge. So, after 24 hours, palalabasin din yun. Ang problema, baka hindi na cellphone ang kanyang nanakawin. Baka ang susunod na bangko na. But remember, the legal process serve an important purpose. The same is true in the spirit realm. Sabi ng Proverbs 6.31, But if the thief is caught, he must pay back seven times what he stole, even if he has to sell everything in his house. The law of God states, ang magnanakaw, pag nagnakaw, nahuli, magbabayad siya ng seven times. A heavenly court procedure will impose this sentence on our enemy. And he has to pay us. So we cannot take earthly legal matters into our own hands. Same is true in our spiritual walk. Diba? Kasi sabi ng Thessalonian 5.15, Make sure that no one pays back wrong for wrong. Oh. Romans 12.19, Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. See? Ang punishment, si Lord ang magpapanish, hindi tayo. So you have, to give, you have to give God a legal right. That's why every time you forgive a person of what he did something wrong, to, he did something wrong to you, you forgive the person in the heart, you are giving God a legal right to take revenge for you. Siya ang gaganti para sa'yo. Nakuha niyo po. Di ba dyan sa Romans, may binanggit dyan ng Panginoon, na kapag ikigumuha ng mabuti sa taong nagkamali sa'yo, ay parang nilalagyan mo ng apoy o baga sa kanyang ulo. Anong ibig sabihin noon? The first mentioned principle of that, uh, uh, yung baga na yon ay doon sa uh, temple. The high priest will enter the Holy of Holies at yung baga nilalagyan niya ng incense at ito'y kanyang uh, uh, pinapausok doon sa loob ng presence ni Lord. 
when they, when you do good things to a person who did done wrong to who did wrong to you ibig sabihin when you forgive that person you're bringing the person into the presence of God bakit sa ulo because it will cause him to change his mind nanawa niyo po so when you forgive a person you're giving God a legal right to make a revenge for you. Oh. Hindi ikaw ang magano. Gaganti. Siya. So kung ninakawan ka ng kaaway, siya ang magre-require sa enemy na bayaran ka seven times. That's why going to court puts the responsibility to God who will charge the enemy to make it sure that his word is followed. So when you go to the court and you charge the devil, you bring him in the, you make him a dependent in the court of heaven, God will make it sure that enemy is charged and he will pay you. So the purpose of going to court is to allow God to order your life and to release you into your divine destiny. So, so ano mangyayari if you don't go to the court? This spirit will just be roaming around here on earth. Walang judgment sa kanila eh. Kasi bakit? Wala man nagsusumbong sa korte. Eh. Nakuha niyo po ang ibig sabihin? Pares din yung mga, mga magdanakaw sa kalsada. O. O yung mga kriminal. Hanggat walang nagre-reklamo at hindi na si sentensya nito mga kriminal na ito, mananatili silang on the loose. And they can do whatever they want. Nanawaan niyo po. So that's why God want us na magsumbong sa korte. So that He can issue judgment, He can arrest this spirit. Because the one who has the right on the earth is human. Mm-hmm. Kaya hindi pwedeng makialam ang Diyos nang wala tayong gagawin. So kung gusto niyo mo palayas yung mga espiritu dyan sa inyong lugar na nagkukos para ang mga tao maging bulag sa katotohanan at sa mabuting balita, you need to go to the court and arrest this spirit. Pag wala na ito mga spirit na ito, spirito na ito, I guarantee you, yung mga tao lalapit na sa Diyos. Mapupuno ang simbahan nyo. Oh. Okay. The last one, is to allow God to order your life and to release you into your divine destiny. Now, in the arena of personal growth, life, life coaching, or we call it motivational speaking, focus on self-promotion. Self-promotions. The purpose is to take control and to position yourself in your destiny. That's why, dito sa Davao, may nag ordain ng pastor. You just pay three, ah, no, no. May nag ordain dito ng bishop. Magbayad ka lang ng 3,500. Bishop ka na. Meron naman, narinig ako na uh, mag-aaral ka ng isang linggo ata. Doctorate ka na. Bibigyan ka na ng certificate na you are doctorate. One time, tinanong ko yung kakilala ko. Sabi ko, meron ka bang ginawang thesis? Sabi niya, ano yung pastor? Eh, yung anak ko nga, nagmasteral eh, tatlong taon. Meron pa siyang thesis na ginawa bago siya naka-graduate ng masteral. How much more yung doctorate? May thesis din yan. You see? Now, they have a good intention. But the problem is, You cannot position yourself in your destiny in your own way. Remember what we have said, it's illegal to take matters into your own hands. Even your own promotion. But you need to know that it is not up to you to take matters of your own destiny into your own hands. You cannot promote yourself. Mga kapatid, kahit gano'n pa ka 
uh, holy ang motive mo. You cannot promote yourself. You cannot take matters in your own hands, even your own destiny. It is not up to you to promote yourself in the earthly realm into the place God has shown you. You cannot promote. It is not allowed that we promote ourselves. No, 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 po. It is not allowed. Even stepping into your destiny is a holy gift from the Lord. It's a gift. Ibinibigay ito ni Lord. Hindi ito paningkamot, panintiil. Sabi sa Bisaya. Or you do it in your own human strength and human determination. A very powerful place we see it is in relation to King David's destiny. Remember? David was ordained as a king when he was a young boy. In King David's inheritance was his destiny to be king. And yet David never took his own destiny into his own hand. David relied on God to promote him at the right time. Kaya, may iwasan nyo rito yung untimely promotion. Kasi sometimes, we promote ourselves. He understood that it was not up to himself to put himself on the throne of his destiny. Yes, it is, it is God's destiny for him to be king, but not his own way. Remember in 1 Samuel 24 verse 6, Diba? The story of this is, hinahabol siya ni Saul. And Saul, there was a call of nature. Nataisiguro siya, pumasok siya sa kweba na kung saan doon nagtatago si David at ang kanyang mighty men. At ang sabi ng kanyang mighty men, I think Abner ang pangalan, sabi niya, Boss, patayin na natin yan. Sigurado, ikaw na ang hari. Bukas. Anong sagot ni David? May the Lord not let me put out my hand against my leader, for he is the Lord's chosen one. Alam ni David ang calling niya, He'd be, be the, he will be the next king. But he cannot allow to take that kingship in his own way, on his own power. David did not kill Saul. Di ba? Nang lumabas si, ano, si Saul, kinausap siya ni David. Sabi niya, sa totoo lang, yung buhay mo nasa aking kamay na. Kaya pinakita niya yung dulo nung ano, yung laylaya nung, nung damit ng hari. Di ba? Pinunit niya, ano, ni, ni David, ginapang niya, at tas pinunitan niya. O, pinakita niya yung ebidensya. O, sabi niya, kanina dapat patay ka na, pero hindi kita pinatay. Because I will not touch the anointed of God. Bakit? King David's destiny was not in his own hands. Alam niya yun. Na yung kanyang destiny, wala sa kanyang kamay. Nasa kamay ng Diyos. So your destiny, your promises, your promotion into your inheritance comes from only one place. It comes from the Lord. Lord, the owner of everything. Kaya yung Lord, di ba, meron na ito na landlord. Oh, Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Bakit si David, sinabi niya, I cannot touch the anointed of God because of Psalm 75, 6 to 7. Sabi ron, promotion does not come from the east or the west or the south. But the God is the judge. He puts one down and he raises up another. See? Ang Diyos lang ang pwede mag-promote sa atin. Kahit paanong pagsisikap natin, kahit paanong gawin natin na pag-develop ng ating mga sarili, ng ating mga skill and talent, mga kapatid, I'm not saying na 
wag yung i-develop yon. But the promotion will not always, they will not, it will not come from you. It is only comes from the judge. So if you want to be promoted, you come to the court. You file a promotion. The earthly court cases prevent you from taking matters into your own hands. Diba? Heavenly courts provide a forum for you to safely receive that which, that which is rightly belong to you at the right time and under the correct circumstances. Ano nga po? So, you go to the court. Present yourself. Lord, kailangan ko na bang ma-promote? Hmm. Kung hindi pa, Lord, ano po yung gagawin ko? What is written in my book? I want to fulfill it, Lord. The end. So, mga kapatid, why a heavenly court process is necessary? Number one, the courts are where we take ownership of the promises. Because the promises in the Bible that the Lord wrote for us is not automatic. Kinakailangan, you need to receive it. Second, the court's order, it is illegal to take matters into our own hands. That's why ang pag-away sa kaaway, you cannot engage with the devil toe-to-toe because your security is at risk. Kaya ang gusto lang ni Lord, pumunta ka sa court at doon ka magsumbong. Kaya nung sinabi nung Archangel Michael, sabi kay Satan, the Lord rebukes thee. Sa Tagalog, ang ibig sabihin niyan, sumbong kita sa tatay ko kasi siyang may pamalo, siya ang papalo sa iyo. Number three, the courts provide a venue to punish the enemy. O ano po? And lastly, To allow God to order your life and to release you into your divine destiny. If you want to be released to your divine destiny, gusto ni Lord yun eh. But there is a procedure na kailangan mong gawin. You need to present yourself in the court. Amen? Okay.